What's the difference between medium and maximum security? Medium security is sometimes can be more dangerous because there's more freedom. And so if you, it's like the guy who killed Jeffrey Dahmer. When you are the scourge of the prison system, you are a target. There's going to be some other information in the future that would be of interest. And uh... now we're two and a half years later. What the hell is that information? Hi, this is Bruce Rivers. Welcome to another fun-filled episode of Criminal Lawyer Reacts. I'm Bruce Rivers, your board-certified criminal defense lawyer. Coming to you with my pearl handle pistol cufflink, so graciously gifted to me by who? By our content genius. Who do you know him by? Michael Rivers. He is... He and I, we're having so much fun with this channel, and just to let you know, um, I love the guy. And you should too. <laughs> Give him some props out there. Because he's not in front of the camera, and he does so many, he does so, he does all the heavy lifting. And that's why I, I give him shout outs, because he works hard, and he's, uh, he's just my butt. Anyway, um, a couple things, little, little news items. I can't remember who sent this to me. Somebody sent me this, and uh, it's got me on the one side, and uh, here it says, and here's the other thing. I guess you guys know what the heck I say. And then we get notes from time to time. You know how much we appreciate that? We really appreciate our fans. And you guys are just amazing. Just amazing, amazing, amazing. And it's not lost on us. But what do we try to do here? We try to educate a little bit, and we try to entertain. Okay? So today, we're going to react to uh, the Chauvin news about him being assaulted in prison. Before we get to that, let's say for the sake of argument that your grandmother's in the basement because you keep her in the basement. Grandmother is an unknown quantity and she's not like any other grandma. And she's got all kinds of warrants up because she's been dealing meth out of your basement. Well, you probably should get her out of there. But before you do that, you need to contact some lawyers to figure out how do I get my grandmother out of the basement and take over her stuff. Well, you go to a lawyer and all of a sudden he's downloaded the app. You get three free signatures a month and you sign a retainer agreement remotely. I use eSign all the time for retainer agreements. If I got a client in the hospital, for example, he can do it right on his phone. eSign.com, very effective way to remotely do business because if it's not eSign, no one signs. All right, let's talk a little bit about getting assaulted in prison. When you are the scourge of the prison system, you are a target. And what kind of people are targets? Let's just talk about people who are targets to begin with. You know, most people that go to prison, they're afraid to go to prison. There's all kinds of different unknowns. But there's two kinds of people that are targets in prison. Cops are one. I had a cop not that long ago go to prison. And what they did is they didn't put him in a Minnesota prison because he had put a lot of people away. So they put him in South Dakota. He's no longer in prison. And also child molesters. Child molesters are an absolute target. They call them chomos. My hair is a mess. So, Lieutenant, what's up? What are we investigating tonight? A lot of times they're put in protective custody. The thing that sucks for them, whether it's whether you're a cop or a child molester, you're you're in lockdown. So you're on 23 and 1. It means you're only out for an hour a day a lot of times. And you're in solitary. Why are you in solitary? Because of this kind of shit that happens. Apparently, uh, Derek Chauvin was stabbed. And he had to be hospitalized. He's stable now. And, um, you know, it's not uncommon for this kind of thing to happen. You know, especially in federal prison, you know, depending upon where you go. He was in Arizona. I don't know much about it, but it was a medium security. What's the difference between medium and maximum security? Maximum security, you're pretty much 23 in one. You're, you're in your cell most of the time. You have restricted movement. There's, you know, you're not really interacting with a lot of other inmates. Medium security sometimes can be more dangerous because there's more freedom. Think of the guy who killed Derek Chauvin. He's probably one of the most famous cops to ever be prosecuted in our country, right? And so if you, it's like the guy who killed Jeffrey Dahmer. You know, he shoved a fucking broomstick up his ass. Imagine, you know, you're the guy who did that. If you're serving a life sentence, what the hell difference does it make to you anyway? So whoever did this to him, they've, and they, they know who it is, he'll, he'll, be, he'll be getting a probably attempted murder, I, w- I would bet. Certainly aggravated assault. And it's federal because he's in a federal facility. He was in a federal facility, FCI. They call it Federal Correctional Institution, so FCI 
uh, Tucson, which is where he was. Why is Derek Chauvin in a federal facility? Because he was he was convicted in the state court. And actually, the Supreme Court of the United States has just rejected his appeal. His, so let's just back up a little bit. So remember, he was charged in the state court. In state court, he was convicted, and he got a 22-and-a-half-year sentence, 270-some-odd months. And then he was convicted in federal court for violating civil rights and got a very similar type sentence. Now, this is kind of complicated, but in state court, you get a third off for good behavior. So let's say he's got 270 months, take 90 off of that, and you do 180. So 15, he'll do 15 out of the 22 years. But if he's in state court, he doesn't get credit for the federal sentence that he's doing. Okay, so he got the same amount of time. And so when you're in doing federal time, you get credit for state time. But if you're in a state facility, you don't get credit for federal time. Okay, you with me on that? Derek Chauvin, by demanding to go to or requesting to go to a federal facility, he's doing that so that his time runs concurrent. And really, it should run concurrent because they are the exact same set of facts. You know what the facts are, right? I mean, he... He knelt on this guy's neck for, on George Floyd's neck for nine minutes. And he, there was all kinds of people around and he, and he quit moving. All kinds of people around to say, hey, get off him, get off him. He's not moving, that kind of thing. And there's a lot of talk on the internet about, you know, a lot of people are commenting, you know, it's a sham trial or, and that's what he said, actually. I know who all the lawyers were in this case. And uh, the prosecutors, Steve Slisher and Jerry Blackwell, those are two guys that, you know, I know fairly well. And and this happened right across the street uh, from where my office is. Building right over there, that's a Hennepin County Government Center. That's exactly where the courthouse was. So this happened in my backyard. And and the guy who was the lawyer for Derek Chauvin is a guy by the name of Eric Nelson. He's a colleague of mine, fine lawyer. Uh, but he had an uphill battle. One of the things that didn't sit well with me is the fentanyl level in George Floyd's system. I can't remember exactly what it was, 11 or 12 nanograms per milliliter. This particular medical examiner has had issues with that fact. So so where does he sit now? Well, now he's in ICU, I guess, or at least in the hospital. But he's gone as far as he can go unless there's any kind of new evidence. And the new evidence could come forward in the, in the form of n- newly discovered science about fentanyl and levels. Now, keep in mind, obviously, if you are a regular user of fentanyl and you get a tolerance to it, you know, you, you have more of a tolerance to higher levels of it. I've handled a lot of murder three cases in Minnesota. Murder three is death at the delivery of a controlled substance. And fentanyl is just running rampant everywhere everywhere. 47-year-old Chauvin is serving out his 21-year federal sentence for violating Floyd civil rights and a 22 and a half year state sentence for second degree murder at this medium security federal correctional facility in Tucson, Arizona. Back in August, officials moved him there from this maximum security Minnesota state prison where he was mainly kept in solitary confinement largely for his own protection. Well, when you're in a maximum security facility, everybody's everybody's in lockdown because they're all bad guys, right? But they moved him at the request of Chauvin to a federal facility, like I said, so he gets credit for the state time and the federal time at the same time. So we have a new sponsor. Step one, step one, underpants. Let's say, uh, for the sake of argument, you're going to a deep interrogation and you're the subject of a federal criminal investigation. Well, what happens? You, get, you sweat like crazy and you're nervous as hell. Why are you nervous? Because I'm not there. If I was there, you'd feel just fine. But guess what? If you got your step ones on there, you're not chafing. You're not sweating. It's made out of this viscose material from bamboo. It's fantastic. You know, I wore these for 8,500 miles, 8,500 miles to Alaska and back on my motorcycle. And I didn't chafe. I didn't sweat. And I hardly even knew they were there. So here's the deal. You'll see step1.life. Order your whatever you're going to order. And they've got all different colors. they got all different colors and styles. They've got your style, too. So you order what you're going to order, then you go into the uh, checkout, enter the promo code Bruce Rivers, you'll get 25% off. If you're a fan of the channel and you're a fan of your Nestled Goods, because they also have a pouch for those too, 
then take care of them. Take care of them with step one. If you don't like it, you have a 30-day guarantee. So it's a zero-risk proposition. You get your money back. But you're not going to do that because you're going to fall in love with these. And they've got all kinds of different colors and styles, and they've got your style too. In a recent documentary called The Fall of Minneapolis, Chauvin spoke to the media for the first time, calling the trial and sentencing a sham, claiming his use of his knee on Floyd's neck was part of his police training manual. In fact, I'm looking at it right now. 5-316, axial restraint technique, right in their written policy manual. And here's the thing. He had an expert, the state had an expert, and the manual is not the law. It's what their training is. And their training did not tell him if the guy's not moving, continue to stay on his neck. You know, he has a duty. He has a duty as an officer when you take somebody into custody to ensure their health. Two things could be happening at the same time. He could be having an increased reaction to the fentanyl, you know, spurred on by the push on the neck. The actual time on the neck was nine minutes and 29 seconds. Nine minutes and 29 seconds. That's an awful long time. And then all of a sudden, somebody stops to be moving. You know, I had a case one time where my client was a bouncer at a bar. And they kicked some guy out of the bar. And later on, it turned out he was 0.29. So he was just shit-faced. That's shit-faced. And he smacked my client on the head. And my client turned around, grabbed him, brought him to the ground, and held him there until the cops got there. And when he got up, he was dead. And he didn't choke him, but he had him in, you know, the wrestling hold where you you put your arm around the neck and then under the arm like that, and then you're leaning against him. So he had his full body weight. He was like 6'2 or 6'3 and 270. And this guy was six foot tall, probably about 180. So a thin guy. And when you when you put all that weight on somebody, guess what happens? I know what happens personally because when we tried that case, my co-counsel had me get on the floor in the well of the courtroom, and when he got on the and he put me in that same fucking hold, and, he, and I was only there for a minute, and I'm starting to go black out, you know, while my client was holding me like he did, and then he had him get up, you know, showing he didn't do anything wrong, and he had petechiae. I remember what petechiae are. Petechiae are when the blood gets backed up, and it can happen when somebody's choked, but it can also happen. When you have this compression on the chest or the neck, and uh, and then the blood stops flowing, and that's what happened in that case. And my client had no idea. Just like in Chauvin, you know, he he's on him, and he's got a duty to check on his airway, check on his breathing, check on his heart, make sure he's he's not doing damage. And sources say Chauvin is, as of now, in stable condition and is expected to survive. But we have not heard back from his attorney or the prison. Now, that's kind of scary, you know, when you think about it, because now where does he go? He's not somebody that could be shipped to an out-of-state prison in the hopes that nobody knows who he is. And, you know, because I've had that happen and nobody knows who the guy is. So look at what happened at sentencing. Now, when, you, when somebody gets sentenced, they have the last word. It's called elocution. So if somebody gets sentenced and you, that's where you get up and you say, I'm really sorry, you know, I take responsibility, I feel for the family, blah, 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 blah. None of it really fucking matters, unless it's a different kind of case. This, this is a homicide. He knows he's going to appeal, so he's got to be a little bit careful as to what he's going to say. He can't give a full-throated apology. I'm so sorry for what I did, and why can't he do that? Because he's, his defense is, I didn't do anything wrong, I followed my training. Uh, Mr. Chauvin, this is your opportunity, if you wish, to uh, give any input to the court. And so I turn it over to you and your attorney. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, at this time, due to some additional legal matters at hand, I'm not able to give a full formal statement at this time. Um, but very briefly, though, I uh, do want to give my condolences to the Floyd family. Remember, he didn't testify at trial, which I think was a good thing because what he did is not really in it, at issue. What he did was just a matter of what does it legally mean. Um, there's going to be some other information in the future that would be of interest. And uh, Now, we're two and a half years later. What the hell is that information? Is it the information about the fentanyl and science behind it? Who knows? 
I hope things will give you some some peace of mind. Thank you. And I'll note that I did read your comments in the pre-sentence investigation as well. Thank you, Judge. All right, we are going to take a 50... So, and that was Judge Cahill. So I'm not going to say anything about Judge Cahill. But he could have said, you know, I'm so sorry. I really, you know, apologize. I'm, you know, he was such a great guy. And he could have said anything. It wouldn't have mattered. Whether he says anything or don't say anything. Generally speaking... A judge wants to hear some acceptance of responsibility, remorse for your actions, that kind of thing. And that came about as close as he could and still preserving stuff on appeal. I mean, I'm, we did a reaction a while back where this older guy had his, his son was murdered. The defendant gave this full-throated apology, and we'll play a little bit of that for you because that's it's kind of relevant to this kind of stuff. No, I don't blame you. I'm not angry at you at all. I want you to know that. I forgive you on behalf of Salahuddin and his mother. Forgiveness. A lot of times you hear anger. You, you hear, I'll never forgive you for this. This is just grace. And I think the world needs so much more of this type of person. <laughs> Again, the judge shakes her head. You know why she's shaking her head? Because it's remarkable. You don't see this. And it was so amazing when you see the grace that this older gentleman had. And he asked the court if he could get down and give the defendant a hug. It was so incredible. You know, that's where I think humanity needs to go. Tenor in the courtroom, you know, when this all went down, it was so hostile to him. There's no way that he could, and, that, and that's one of the, his grounds for appeal because he couldn't get a fair trial and the publicity and a change of venue was denied. And the, I think the court said, wouldn't matter where you go, everybody knows about this case. But we're not that far from George Floyd Square. I mean, it's only a couple miles south of here. There was, I mean, we had barricades up. We had, it was just, the city was just in turmoil. They, they burned down the third precinct. He, he had an uphill battle politically speaking, here in town. People have had definite opinions on this case. I mean, really, really strong opinions. And we, first of all, we love the comments. We just love, love, love comments that you guys make. So keep them coming. Keep them coming. Let's just read some of these comments. I think they're fucking hilarious. The stabber has been placed on administrative leave while the other inmates conduct an internal investigation. <laughs> the inmates investigated themselves and found no wrongdoings in the matter. Now, the Supreme, so they, they appealed the state court decision all the way up to the Supremes, and the Supremes have, have rejected their appeal. So that's as far as they can go. What, is there anything else he could do? Well, he could file a motion for post-conviction relief, but it has to be based on new evidence, the evidence that wasn't available at the time of trial. So if there's any kind of technology or new science that comes out about fentanyl, I, I would, and I think it, there is some brewing, but he's pretty much done. So he's, he, his appeals have been exhausted, and he's pretty much going to have to just serve out that uh, 21 and a half, 22 year sentence. And he's going to have to, and, you, and in the federal system, you do 85%. He does not qualify for the First Step Act, I don't think. So that's our little reaction to Derek Chauvin getting assaulted in prison and having his appeals exhausted almost at the same time. You know, I feel for the family of George Floyd. And, and remember what this fucking case was about? It was about a fake $20 bill and a fifth degree or, you know, very low level amount of drugs. Had he had some interactions with cops before? Sure he did. But it did not need to escalate. It did not need to escalate to this. So... My heart goes out to everybody. We'll see you next time here on Criminal Lawyer Reacts. I'm Bruce Rivers. Make sure you subscribe. Follow us on Instagram. Follow us on Twitter. Um, sign up for Patreon. And we'll see you next time here on Criminal Lawyer Reacts. So we have a new sponsor. Step one. Step one. Underpants. Let's say, uh, for the sake of argument, you're going to a deep interrogation and you're the subject of a federal criminal investigation. Well, what happens? You get, you sweat like crazy and you're nervous as hell. Why are you nervous? Because I'm not there. If I was there, you'd feel just fine. But guess what? 
if you got your step ones on there, you're not chafing, you're not sweating. It's made out of this viscose material from bamboo. It's fantastic. You know, I wore these for 8,500 miles, 8,500 miles to Alaska and back on my motorcycle. And I didn't chafe, I didn't sweat, and I hardly even knew they were there. So here's the deal. You'll see step one dot life. Order your whatever you're gonna order. And they've got all different colors. They got all different colors and styles. They've got your style too. So you order what you're going to order, then you go into the uh, checkout, enter the promo code Bruce Rivers, you'll get 25% off. If you're a fan of the channel and you're a fan of your nestled goods, because they also have a pouch for those too, then take care of them. Take care of them with step one. If you don't like it, you have a 30-day guarantee, so it's a zero-risk proposition and you get your money back. But you're not going to do that because you're going to fall in love with these. And they've got all kinds of different colors and styles, and they've got your style too. I'm part of Bruce Rivers is broke, that your case. He know all the charges that you about to face. You ain't coming home till 2058. That self snitching gon' get you put away. Bruce Rivers is broke, that your case. He know all the charges that you about to face. You ain't coming home till 2058. That self snitching gon' get you put away. 23 hour lockdown, please, is that my goal?